Hello, everybody. It's Paul Neese from Torah Life Ministries. We have another great guest on today. Today, our guest is Priscilla. Priscilla, say hello to the Torah Life audience. Hello. Shalom. Priscilla, you have a wonderful story to share. First, introduce yourself to the audience, a little about your background. Were you raised a Christian? Um, yes, I was, but not a very serious Christian. It was uh, very passive in our home. I guess, uh, you know, we did the whole Christmas, Easter, went to church on Sunday, so... I don't know what you would call that, but I did grow up with uh, biblical um, principles, I guess, in my home. Okay. And uh, and what happened? Because now, I, if I understand correctly, you believe in the Hebraic roots, correct? Yes, I do. Um, uh, how I came to believe in that was uh, when I met my husband, um, and I met them. I met him through a friend who was Messianic. And uh, they had invited him out because he had started attending a Messianic congregation. And uh, when he did come out, I was at the same house uh, of these people. And I happened to meet my husband there. And we started growing in faith together that way. And uh, that's how my mind was opened up to the Torah. Sure. Now, when you first heard of it, were you right away on board saying this is the way to do it? Or did you have some reservations about, uh, I don't know if that's right. I'm just going to do it anyway. Well, you know what, I followed mostly my husband, but at the same time, um, there was some challenges. I was a little stubborn about the Sabbath because I was used to doing uh, things uh, my way, kind of the passive way, right? Um, but as I studied it more and the seriousness of it, I guess uh, uh, the Father, you know, softened my heart in that area and just uh, taught me more things and humbled me to obey. And when you uh, started obeying and keeping the Sabbaths and things like this, were you currently attending a church or were you not attending anywhere at the time? I was attending a church. I was actually in choir. Um, it was, if I remember, yes, a Baptist church. So, yes, I was. And uh, when I was leaving, they knew I was going to attend a Messianic Jewish uh, congregation. And uh, I got a little persecution there. Uh, but... You know, I was I was moving ahead, you know, and I, I couldn't look back. There was uh, some issues there, you know, when you leave a church. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just had to follow where the Spirit was leading me. Well, how did you approach it? Did you, did, you, did you tell them what you were doing, or did you just leave and they found out? What exactly happened? Uh, my attendance was not very regular, and then they kept asking me what was going on. Um, and then I opened up to them and I did confront the pastor as well and told him about the Sabbath why he wouldn't lead the congregation that way which caused even another issue so they just cut me off and I just took it from there that that was my my cue to sort of just move forward and that's a, that was a, a stage or a step for me and I, I couldn't look back I just had to keep going sure and what about your friends and family uh, how they accept this change um in the beginning, it was more like, uh, you know, it's great that you have a, you know, some another religion or maybe an interest, you know. But when you started dying to a lot of things like not doing the Christmas, not doing the Easter and, you know, so forth, and uh, not going for events on Saturdays, it started becoming an issue. Um, so, yeah, they it's not really going that well. People are used to it, but... You know, it's not as they're used to it, but not really at the same time. You know, it's the one time it comes up and they're just like, why don't you just do what you did when you grew up? And it's really hard to explain to them and to, you know, have them understand, you know, the truth. Sure. Well, your your husband and your husband's family, they're into the Hebrew roots. And that must make it much easier for you to, yes. to do that and have fellowship, right? Fellowship, right? Yes, yes, that makes it much easier. It's You can't do it on your own. I'm really thankful that a lot of them do believe um, in the same faith. Wonderful, wonderful. So tell us, share with us uh, where you are now. Like how long ago was it when you made that change and how's your your walk now? Um, it was about four years ago. And um, my walk now is a little more, I guess, serious than than the beginning, I guess, because as the days get darker, I guess, the more the light shines and the more you're attracted to it. So the more trials come your way, you know what I'm saying? Sure. It's a bit harder. It's, it's a harder walk um, because, yeah, just lots of pressures from the world now, you know, ever than before. Sure. And I hear you have children in the background. How many kids do you have? 
Three, two girls, and a boy. <laughs> and uh, how is it raising children with the Hebraic roots lifestyle? Because it's not the most common way to live. Oh, it's it's very hard. It is. Um, there's lots of traps. Um, you know, even when you go visit family, there's the traps here and there of, let's say, just, you know, food. If, if you have to always warn, you know, we don't eat pork, um, you know, things like that, or, you know, invites that come out. And it, it's hard, you know what I mean? It's it's hard even uh, raising girls too. It's it to have them set apart in an age that's very um, sexual and you know how it is out there. It's it's just very hard. But you know. Sure, sure. Well, that brings up a good topic. Is there anything that that you've developed a passion for? Of course, the Hebraic roots. But oh. any other topics that that you're starting to discuss more or see that you there's a need that you want to fill. Um, yes, um, and that's in the modest um, area. Um, and uh, I do have a page actually that I created on Facebook because of uh, this issue. Um, I have two girls and, uh, you know, I'm an example to them and they, they look at me and watch me for everything. And um, I guess it's an area I never thought much of before I had my children. Um, I was very passive to, but now... Um, I guess my eyes have been open to it and I see how important it is. And so um, I have a page created out there that uh, inspires me as well as inspires a lot of women out there to just embrace modesty because it's not really given a good name. And uh, when I walked into the faith, I knew it was a topic, but it wasn't really emphasized. Even when you did go to congregations, um, there's more heavier topics discussed. And I find this is a heavy topic in itself, but it's not really addressed. And being young, I don't see much of the older women teaching us this. It's sort of like um, you see that there's a standard there, but it's not a topic that's really emphasized. I mean, if it was emphasized as much as the Sabbath as well, I think um, that would be great because I think in this day and age, like I had mentioned, that's very sexual and teaching girls to be sexual. Um, we need that. We need um, um, to really press on that topic because it's very vital for marriages um, and just uh, just in general. Now, have you always had this uh, these feelings about modesty, or was something that got stirred up when you got into the Hebraic roots? Um, I was very passive to it. Um, in the Hebraic roots, I did uh, realize they wore a lot of skirts, and I used to wear pants. Um, I don't wear pants anymore. Uh, personal conviction, um, but. When I actually walked into the Hebrew roots, I was very stubborn because there was a congregation that had a law and it said no pants and I was a rebel and I came in pants and uh, it's something we joke about with my husband, but um, it took a while for my eyes to be open to it and slowly I started sort of grafting into what Yah wanted me to be, almost like a butterfly effect for me. So I'm slowly transitioning to, you know, the set apart ways more so. Sure. Now, I notice you're wearing a head covering right now. Is this something you do sometimes or all the time? Do you feel that it's a modest thing or, or is it just a fashion thing? Well, you know what? Um, I did grow up wearing head coverings, but it was more of a practical thing. Um, so when I got into the Hebrew roots movement, it was more of a big issue. Um, I didn't think it was this big of an issue. I really thought that head coverings were, was for practicality, for covering your hair, um, protection against sun, uh, when you're gardening, um, things like that. Um, so do I wear mine, um, out of conviction, biblical conviction? No, I wear it more so for protection or just to have my hair back. So I don't know if you want to call it a fashion thing, but for more for practicality. Sure, yeah, sure. so I don't so so I don't wear it um, all the time, and I do not believe it is uh, mandatory, uh, based on my studies right now. Well, on your Facebook page, uh, what do you discuss when it comes to modesty, or what is it about? What do you try? What's the message you try to tell people? Of course, raise your young girls modest, but what kind of message are you trying to get out? Well, I'm also, uh, I, I had originally started it with uh, trying to inspire women to sort of um, look at modest um, images. And why it started off that way is because I saw the power of media. 
I saw the power of magazines when you go grocery shopping and you see, they show you all sorts of fashions which influence us, you know, the clothes that are in the stores. So I started off the page with um, imagery, just showing um, lots of beautiful skirts, tops, giving ideas for those who sew. Um, but then it expanded to, um, you know, sharing uh, videos on their links to buy clothes. Um, so, yeah, that's it's it's a pretty it's just based on um, just plain modesty. Um, be inspired by images and videos and other people. Wonderful. And what is that Facebook page? Can you let us know if people want to go there and check it out? It's called Modest Inspiration on Facebook. Modest Inspiration on Facebook. And is that the best way for people to get in touch with you as well? Um, yes. Uh, my, my Facebook name, I don't mind to share it, is Sela DeBach. Um, uh, other than that, yeah, that's that's where you can... Find me, contact me. Okay, Priscilla, as being a young woman in today's world who was a Christian and then discovered the Hebraic roots, uh, what would you like to say or what would your advice be to everyone, but specifically to young women out there who haven't discovered this yet? Um, you know what? It's it's a very gradual process uh, to transition to modesty, especially if you've grown up in a Western uh, background. I would really just advise to pray about it and let the Father open your eyes to it and and go about it slowly, humbly, and patient with others um, because it can be a very judgmental also area. Um, it requires a lot, a lot of prayer because the enemy has really tapped into this area. Wonderful, wonderful. And not only modesty, what about making a transition from Christianity to Hebraic roots? Uh, anything you want to say about that? In terms of what? <laughs> like In terms of... You know, not being blind to know that there's more out there than what they tell you at church. Oh, for sure. Um, being set apart is uh, is 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 a whole different level. It's it's uh, to come before the Father. There's a high standard, and we have to humble ourselves and learn His ways. Um, and if we don't, it's uh, it's very hard to you know hear from Him or for Him to show you more. You know, and uh, it, it, there's a rebellious spirit that hovers over the earth, and we really need to uh, um, pray over that. And for those who don't see it, you know, fasting. I do really believe that fasting is a very powerful tool in um, you know seeking the Father. So, yeah. Wonderful. Well, Priscilla, it was great to interview you, and I want to encourage everyone to get to your Facebook page. Thank yeah. you for being a guest. Anything else you want to say before we end? Uh, no, that's that's about it. <laughs> Wonderful. You did a great job. Thank you very much, and shalom, shalom. Yeah, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people. Seek the truth, avoid the evil. Learn Yahweh's ways. Torah life ministries. Come out of the world.